Yo, what's going on, my friends? How you doing? Happy Easter to you. Let me grab the live stream link. We'll share that in the Discord. All right. Oh, da, 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's see here. Apparently, I need to make, I guess, another place to talk about stuff in the Discord because I have only thought about it to use it for notifications, but every once in a while, somebody actually wants to do something else in there. So, <laughs> right now, people are making AI versions of uh of me that i find enjoyable so maybe i'll make a little separate discord area for crap like that for now <laughs> and then like in two weeks when that's not the flavor of uh the times anymore i can just i've done it with other rooms and removed them so maybe we'll go that route but i'll worry about that later right let's let's do our hellos what up jess ang uh, Cade, Gossett, Zircon, Stormtrooper, Roman, Teferi, Error, Cloud Chaser, Harry, Everyday, Random, Shelton, Tate, Felonious T, Astro, Doomblade, Pierce, Tenfor, Elwin, Juglum, Zeria. Haskins, uh, 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 uh. Joe, Superbacker, Astro Worm, Bill, uh, da, 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 da. Ned, Thor, Nishimoto, Super Duper, Running, Some. Hey, there, there's the man. There's the man who made that hilarious, that hilarious bacon Argivian archaeologist. That was amusing. That was amusing. Uh, Nishimoto just finished the Necron vid. Sweet, man. Sweet. Well, you know, we're going to be doing some similar stuff tonight. Oh, hold on. Before I say that, actually, let me just double check. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't check the camera before I started the stream, and I'm always supposed to check the camera before I start the stream if I want to do any downward facing dog, because it can just turn out that the camera is, like, not registering for some reason, and... If that's the case, then there's no way to like make the camera work after the stream started with the OBS that I'm using. So I just sit there and go, well, we were going to look at something, but we're not now. But I do have, you know what, I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to put it down like this. It's a mystery. We're going to crack that. I also have some other mystery stuff here hidden behind my giant manly hands. Whoa. The real magic. Oh, speaking of magic, Daniel Shelley, begin the board. Very well. Lording the board. Starting with you. Here, let me heart that. Let me heart that. What up, Bo Falcon? You like the bacon historian picks? They turned out great. What up, Hans? Whew. Feeling a little... Feeling a little rough today. A little rough. But that's all right. I got an appointment with my doctor tomorrow. We're going to talk about some stuff. I'm going to get stuff sorted. It's going to be good. And we're not here to worry about none of that. We're here to have a good time and distract me from the fact that I have to go tomorrow for all that nonsense. So, oh, Zeria just finished the board. Well, I need mean, like, listen. <laughs> I feel like you're confused about this whole thing because last night you waited until the stream was over to super chat and try and take the board. And actually, I guess now you're just trying to psychologically maneuver everybody in here into thinking that it's done. And it's like, oh, I was going to take the board, but he said it's finished. I guess that's how it works. That's a bold play. Let's see if anybody ends up seeing through it. <laughs> Either way, you're Lord of the Board and Shelly's been given the boot in Bloodthirsty Conquest with... Psyop moves added in too. <laughs> so, we've got some random magic to look at today. I've got some random Easterness that you're probably not going to be expecting because this is a thing I didn't even know existed until today. And we also have me yelling at Jess because that's definitely going to happen because I was yelling at him last night uh, for the videos that I ended up seeing shared because of him. And they're just, 
Like, I, we'll save it. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's going to happen, too. That's going to happen, too. What up, sandwich? Happy Easter to you, too, buddy. Shelly's already... No, I've been overthrown. Didn't take long. Didn't take long tonight. What up, Pots? How you doing? How you doing? Thinking of getting a raining cats and dogs secret layer? Be your first collector piece for magic? It's certainly nice to have stuff that you enjoy in your collection, right? Life is for the living. Get some stuff that you enjoy, son. Speaking of things that I enjoy, I'm uh, keeping my eyes peeled because if the right person shows up in the stream tonight, we'll be opening something particular tonight. So we'll see how it goes. Orange pop? Nope. Nope. Kool-Aid. I got a number of packs of the Kool-Aid. Mm. It's not too bad. I made the orange stuff today because... Um, Carly's favorite is orange and it's Easter and I wanted it to feel special for her so I picked the Kool-Aid flavor she would like because that's I'm just a romantic what can I what can I say we did little Easter egg style hunts around the around the apartment today hiding chocolates in different places and I I made it like a little mini quest for her where she was an adventurer who had to slay 20 demon insects by placing them inside the silver soul destroying chest that obliterates the demons and then once she had once she had accumulated all 20 demons and and had them destroyed then she could quest to the frozen lands in search of the six golden eggs of power and then when she returned them to no face he would give her a treasure map that led to her easter treasure and it went off without a hitch Everything went well. She was able to interpret the little treasure map. And I put music on in the background from YouTube. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Blue Turtle channel. But they have awesome music for like D&D adventures or whatever else you want in the background. Like it works so good for that. So when she like basically I had her leave the apartment and then I taped a note to the door like brave adventurer you must slay 20 demons kind of thing. And you come in and the adventuring music is going. It's great. And then when she walked in, I'm like, you must slay the demons. I followed her around. Shelton said, I made some custom Fallout deck boxes for a friend and I wanted to post pics of them in the Discord. You know what? All right, hold on. Hold on. Let me go to the Discord. Since I already brought this up, let me just go ahead and make like, I'm going to make a new channel for like, we'll go fan made art cards uh custom custom or fan custom custom slash custom slash nope they won't let you put a slash oh and it popped me to the back wow this is i'm it's so good i'm doing this in real time custom and fan made custom yeah custom made mtg stuff Custom made MTG stuff and fan art. All right, there we go. There, that's a long title that's like probably gonna be impossible to read from the side because I'm an old man and I don't I don't Discord. I don't even get why like they called it Discord. It doesn't make any sense. Hold on though. Let me let me respond here. So yeah, it looks like people can get into it. So it's perfect. Oh, Stormtrooper Super Chat coming in after Shelton stole the board. Uh, I was too busy making that Discord group, but you were, you tried to price us right with the 301 to get rid of Zeria, but Shelton was already there. So nice, nice try, but you didn't, you're like, you, you waited too long climbing up to the ropes to the top to do the from the top rope. And then it turned out that somebody else already, oh no, got there first. That's always like uh, you got to taste your own medicine style move, right? Where it's like, oh, you were trying, you were trying to deny the board to somebody else, but instead, you got it denied unto you. 
<laughs> Look, Fixer is going. Orox, Fixer, did you get tricked? Did you get tricked by by Stormtrooper super chat? Thanks for thanks for the cow super chat, but like. You guys are going 301, 302, but Shelton's already up. You got to be 501 jeans up in here, right? Right, Levi? <laughs> oh, if you guys, you know what? Because we talked about it, you know, we've talked enough about the the goofy custom arts and stuff like that, that I'm literally just going to pop one in for a second here. I'm going to pop it in. That's what I said to your mother. Bada, bada, brother. Brother to your mother. All right. Oh, it's so big. Hey, look at that guy. Look at that cutie. His mouth is... Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. I get why this was made. This, this was... Some, you printed this out and put, you put it over a glory hole in a bathroom somewhere, didn't you? You printed this out as a giant sticker. Come on, bro. Come on, man. I was all excited about this, son. I was excited. Now I don't know how to feel. Anyways, look at that. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Bro, I want like I want tons and tons of the cards like this for my cube now that feature me. I thought how hilarious would that be? Oh! Orox 2.0! There, that's how you do it, fixer. You just fixed the board, son. You just fixed it. It's yours. Cardboard Splendor! Super Chat says hi. Can we have a vote? Thanksgiving, Independence Day, or today as the most American. So we what? Wait, what's going on? I don't even know what that second half is. And no, we can't have a vote on whatever. You're trying to turn this into political nonsense? I don't think so. How is Easter an American holiday, right? How does that work? Is is Easter only North American? Whatever. I'm, I'm not getting into the second half of whatever that nonsense is, son. You can leave me out of it. You can leave. Wait, what? No, nah, what just happened there, man? I got completely tricked. Fixer. Fixer's the lord of the board. How did that happen? So distracting. So distracting. All right. Let's fixer this board. <laughs> All right. 501 jeans. It doesn't go down. It doesn't reverse. That's not how it goes, man. That's not how it goes. Fixer, I hope you enjoyed that brief period of time as 501 Jeans, because apparently Nishimoto says it's called Discord because gamers are so salty. You know what? I guess, given the current era, people like to argue so much, but I feel like they just, they went with, like, discourse. You know what I mean? Like, discourse is talking, but, like, that's already been taken. Let's use the name Discord. All right, come on. Nishimoto, you lord of the board, buddy! Oh my God, what happened? What is going on, man? Ah, oh, you fucking shitting me right now? Are you fucking kidding me? I just pulled the tip out, bro. I just pulled the tip out. Oh, as bad as your mama. All right. Oh God. Oh, this marker. Oh, I didn't even get it all. God, why anything, bro? Why? Why anything, man? Why anything? All right, finally. Finally, after 18 long, insufferable years, the board has been updated. And we are, we are legit. We are legit. We are legit. Oh, fix it. Come on, man. Change it back. Come on, bro. I the marker. Oh, fine. Fine. Oh, all right. F Fixer's price is right. And Nishimoto off the board. Hold on. Let me just, well, whatever. There we go. All right. All right. We can do this. We can do this. I can need a reasonable marker, man. Like, oh, listen to that. It's just awful. Ugh. There you go. It's fixered. We're all good. We're all good. Mm. 
I accidentally came up with the punchline of one of Kurt Vonnegut's best books, Why Anything Shit Just Is. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Where was I? What the hell was I talking about? Oh, I don't even know, man. <laughs> Simon won't let you post pictures to the new part of the discord of course it won't of course it won't why oh god okay where do i do the things right clicking on it just won't let me just no i'm too old for any of this it's all oh, what the hell man where do you even put the settings on this anymore where do i go to do it's down here what a terrible place to have this Oh, God, and there's a million options. My account, what do we do? No, is it not this? Oh, God. No. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. It's fine. Here we go. Here we go. Server oh, settings. Overview. Oh, God. Why did I even do this, man? Oh. Rolls for the love of God. Um, where even is this crap? I, I'm not going to click on something like enable community because that's just going to turn out to be some dumb nonsense. I must have missed something. Server settings. Wait, what? All right. Well, you know what? Screw it. Pfft, whatevs, man. I ain't spent. I, I, I will be damned. I will be damned if I spend a stream that's supposed to be fucking chill, just chilling out for Easter, fiddling dick fucking around with the channel. Just post it in the fucking channel you already can post it in. Spoiler talk will let you post whatever. You can just post shit in there for now. I don't care. I don't care. Fuck. What the hell? Wait. Can I just. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, hold on, hold on. Custom made fan, whatever. But if you post gross crap, you're banned. There we go. This isn't a free for all, fuck sticks. Okay, try custom made fan, whatever. But if you post gross stuff, you're fucking banned. That should let you post pictures. But not degenerate fucking bullshit. It's got to be so fucking at least tangentially related to what I do. Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Like other things, if it goes wrong, I'm just going to fucking delete it anyway. So who cares? Who cares? That is actually a funny idea, though, to make like a custom made, to make a custom made thing and not let people post shit in it, you know? <laughs> oh. Felonious T that assumes people know how to adult. Bro, everybody in here likes to pretend like they don't know how to adult, but they all fucking do. They all do. They all do. Like, everybody does. And that's why they're like, so I shouldn't do this? You already fucking know. You're all like the little, oh, tee -hee, Papa, should I not do this? Come catch me, Papa. Come catch me. <laughs> Come on. Fuck off, bro. I'm just trying to fucking not stress out and die before I go to my fucking doctor's appointment tomorrow, right? How is he going to fucking grab my ball bag, rotate it four times so I can stick my fucking arms out and fly to the heavens to escape all your ball? Fucking Nishimoto. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. You're Lord of the Board. I gotta change this shit again, bro. Eat my fucking ass. Deal with this garbage marker and this garbage life. Where, ooh, what if I pimp? What if I post my buttocks? I'm so funny and original. Fuck you. All right. Ugh. Ugh. 
There, you're lower of the board. Are you fucking happy? Are you happy? Fucking dick pics are okay then, he says. No, I guarantee you, first of all, dick pics aren't okay. But yours, your dick pics are definitely obviously going to be way worse because anybody who wants to share the pictures, this is the weirdest fucking, like, conversely strange part of the universe. Guys who have big fat dicks don't waste their time trying to fucking take dick pics of it or nobody. But, uh, but fucking dudes who have thimbles for dongs are all like, uh, pictures, I got somebody needs to see this travesty. <laughs> oh fixer fuck you dude you said come on man you fucking dick you said you said you were out of money baiting somebody else to take the board and here you are you little prick your doctor's gonna tell you to eat more sauces listen listen he's gonna tell me that my fucking sodium levels are through the roof just from these fucking streams bro the salt in here just from me just from me Yeah. There. Look at this shit. It's going invisible. You fuckers don't even care. Now the marker's all the way over there. Oh. <clears throat> Couldn't help yourself. You're sorry. Well, I'm getting dangerously close to the time where Doc might say it's time for a first colonoscopy. Let's, let me explain something to you, Joe. A colonoscopy is a fucking cakewalk compared to this. Because guess what? I got fucking a dozen people up my ass right now. One would be a fucking break. One would be a fucking breather, bro. So bring it on. Sh jamming a tube in my ass is easier than dealing with fucking YouTube and all this shit. I'll tell you that right now. So yeah, I don't fucking care, man. Yeah, fucking fire the whole garden hose up there until it comes out of my mouth. It'll be like a fucking vacation. Zeria, pretty sure you woke your neighbor laughing. That's fine. <laughs> Dice picks. It's like, yo, I left the E off. That's funny. Oh, custom deck boxes. Right on. Hey, and a, a little snappy finger custom of me as like a fucking religious prophet or something. <laughs> or, or a wizard. I like that. That's fun. That's fun. What up, Pedro? After the terrible Lauren art thievery from Thunder Junction, do you feel any positivity about it existing? Thunder Junction sucks right but the art was stolen wasn't for thunder junction that was for that was for other sets so more who knows maybe there's gonna be something in thunder junction that comes up but i feel like wizards would have mentioned that if they said we're suspending work with faye dalton actually maybe they wouldn't want to say an upcoming card maybe they'll just leave it out of the spoiler season if it's even in there i don't know man i don't know last time when they um when they gave Bradley the boot, right? They, uh, they fucking said, like, we got some more artwork of his that'll be coming out in a future product, right? So. Profit, you come into the comedy gold. Well, that's what you want, right? Come in from the cold for the gold. Is Duskmorn going to be the same weird Hasbro game tie in his recent offerings? Who knows? Who knows? I expect Duskmorn to have lazy Freddy Krueger, Five Nights at Freddy's, here's your Jason, here's your this, here's your that, because that's all they're doing now. And I don't know. It's because younger people don't require any substance or depth to anything anymore. And so you just make like meme moments and you don't worry about anything else. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> wish we could go back to three set blocks and less supplemental product it is a breakneck pace i totally agree there's just so much going on right but let us take a moment and turn and let us turn to this this mystery pack i have right here all right See you later, Fixer. Thanks for being part of the fun, buddy. I know I cursed you out, but obviously we're just having a good time, so don't worry about it. Uh, bum, 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 bam. 
Check it out. Do you guys like, do you guys play on the X-Bone? Do you like the Xbox, Xbox One? The Xbox One? Oh wait, I should probably make the camera look a little better if I can here. Oops, that's not the right thing. Eh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. That'll do. That'll do. All right. So inside this mini pack, these were, if you got, um, if you got the old magic computer game or whatever, you would get this promo that you would, the promo code that you would bring into the game store and then the game store would give you one of these packs. I remember when they gave these out. I can't believe this was like fucking eight, eight nine years ago, man. Craziness. All right. So they had like different, different cards in them based on what video game system you got them for. So the PlayStation one gave you scavenging goose, which was a way bigger deal. People would travel around to different cities trying to get those. So... Here we got Soul of Ravnica, six mana, six, six. If you guys didn't know, planes have their own world souls. So this is the Soul of Ravnica, six mana, six, six, flying. Pay seven mana, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. So, you know, guild action. And seven mana, exile it from your graveyard, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. So same ability, but you can activate it from the graveyard. And you just have this avatar wizard guy. Now, by today's standards, this is pure trash, right? Complete garbage. Complete garbage. Then we got Shadow Cloak Vampire. Krenko's Enforcer. It's all just going to be commons. Ulcerate. Oh, I guess on commons too. <laughs> Ulcerate. Invasive Species. And Meditation Puzzle. I always thought this art was really cool, but the card was so underwhelming. Five mana, but you can tap creatures with Convoke to make it cheaper, right? So you can make it cost two mana. But you just gain eight life. This is garbage. But the artwork's awesome. Invasive species is whatever. Ulcerate's okay. But, I mean, if you look at by today's standards, fatal push and stuff. One black to give a creature minus three, minus three, but you lose three life for doing it, right? Uh, Joe, I'm going to come back on the screen for this one. The little cactus guy's the soul of Thunder Junction. Haven't you looked at what Wizards is doing? Thunder Junction has no soul. <laughs> so yeah the souls were terrible maybe not all of them maybe not all of them using dark magic to give someone an ulcer is so funny it's pretty messed up really it's pretty wild I mean I, I was hospitalized with an ulcer when I was like 20 bro spewed so much blood it was crazy look down my both my legs were like covered in it man apparently i passed out from blood loss no clue my buddy's freaking out thinking i'm gonna die he's running around he's gonna die he's gonna die my other friend grabbed him smacked him in the face shut the fuck up get it together and uh yeah well i mean obviously they got me to the hospital i was <laughs> well they didn't take me to the hospital an ambulance came and took me to the hospital but either way i got there i got patched up and taken care of but that was touch and go so yeah that's my that's my that's my fun connection to <laughs> to that pack opening man that was another lifetime ago that's crazy that's crazy tony you started playing magic four months ago and you feel like you missed all the good times don't let people make you feel that way bro whenever you start something is usually going to be one of the best times and like letting other people take that from you that's no good 
that's no good. Things may have been different, but bro, you get to walk in when the game's been around for decades. There's tens of thousands of different cards for you to discover. So many different people playing the game. Like when I started, Standard wasn't a format that existed in any form. They hadn't even birthed Type 2 at that point. Like, there are some awesome aspects of having started Magic when Magic started, but that's pre-internet era, and that's a completely different beast. And so, like, every time is different and awesome in its own way. Yeah, Magic, to me, isn't as awesome as it used to be back in the day. But guess what? I get to be the fucking Magic historian in this version of the universe. So, you know, you take away on one hand, you give on the other hand. It's pretty fucking sweet. I can share my enjoyment that spans the entire history of the game with my friends, which is funny because there's a bunch of people like, you just hate Magic and you never spend any time enjoying it. And it's like, what if I told you that currently I'm playing arena more than almost anybody who's playing arena. And I can promise you that because this is how it used to be in the past. They would send me, th they would send me those notices going, you're like in the top 1% of games played and stuff. You've played so many games of magic on arena. Like, and that's what I've been doing. My fucking steam deck now has arena loaded on it. I didn't know you could do that. So when Carly heard her back today and needed to lay down for a while, I went and kept her company. I had the steam deck. I played magic for hours and i was thinking about oh, i want to play chandler bro i love magic i had so much fun playing it yesterday i might to get together with my buddy and play cube tomorrow i'm thinking about amping up my cube with all these different like bro i get a proxy gift certificate for doing that proxy video that's why i actually just agreed to it because i wanted the packs and i'm like yo i just want to see the packs and how the proxies are looking that's why i agreed to it the first time and they said we'll give you a gift certificate and i'm just like I'll take it, but I never was going to use it. And now it's like, yo, I'm going to use that certificate to make like custom proxies of magic cards with me in the artwork and put it in the cube. And I'm not going to tell my buddy. So we're just going to be playing like what I really want to do. And I don't know how I'm going to pull it off yet because I don't even know if there's any pictures of my buddy that I can go and surreptitiously lift. Like I'm going to have to dig through his Facebook and find pictures of him. And I want to make custom proxies of Terminate and shit like that where it shows him dying. So, like, he'll just pick up a card and go, you know, I want cards if there's two people on it and one guy's fucking the other guy up. I'm the guy fucking the other guy up and it's my buddy's face. Like, I want a bunch of cards that show him getting fucked up and a bunch of cards me looking glorious and amazing. And I want to jam them all into my cube, bro. <laughs> that's the new goal after seeing after seeing this bro after seeing this argivian archaeologist right i was just like bro imagine imagine that imagine like like a whole cube of this kind of shit man i want that i'm gonna make like i'm going i am going to get proxies like this for sure for sure like opening the cube up to proxies was a really smart move it was a really smart move. Some of the stuff that people sent me in the past, like Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, damn, and stuff, just sat on the shelf not getting any love. And they fit in and we had fun with them. So who cares, right? Nishimoto says, old magic was fun, but I ran into more grown men taking advantage of my teenage ignorant self as well. You know what? You're right. There were a lot, there were a lot of what I call sharks that would take advantage of magic players, right? Like... Let's be very real. I'm a shrewd fucking bargainer. So I got myself a lot of good deals, but I had very strict rules when it came to, um, like my rules of trading went like this. If you're brand new to the game, then there's a certain window of time where I'm, I'm not really even worried about trading anything off you. I'll, I'll look out for you. And if I see people trying to rip you off, I'll let you know. And on top of that, I'll give you free stuff. That's what I did. When someone was like, yo, I'm new to the game. I'd be like, here, take a look at my binder. And they'd start flipping through and cards they got excited by that were like rares that weren't like valuable stuff. Like I'm not giving away my valuable rares to a noob who's not gonna know the difference. It's wasted on them. But they're like, yo, yo, Elvish Archers, this card's really cool. I'm like, you're damn right, it's really cool. I love that card too, you should grab some. And they're like, oh, but I don't I don't know what to trade you or what. I'm like, no, 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 just take them, bro. And he's like, but they're rares. It's like, yeah, take them. Go ahead, go through, pick some stuff that you like. And take it. Have fun. 
I'm not enjoying these cards because I already have enough copies to play with. And also, they're not what I'm... I, I didn't say to them. They're noob stuff that aren't good enough for the tournaments and stuff I'm playing in anyways. But it was totally like, you can enjoy these for real. So I would just give people cards. Here you go, right? And that served multiple purposes. First of all, you just get to see people being happy over cards that don't really matter the same way competitively. And you're like, yo, I remember when I used to get super jazzed about stuff that way. And on the other end as well, it's great for establishing trust-filled relationships for future trades where it's just like, yo, you know me, I tell them, I'm like, you don't even worry about trading stuff now, but when you feel like trading and you, you know what you want, come to me, I'll give you a fair deal. My deal is always give you a fucking fair deal because if you screw somebody over hard and they're unhappy with the deal, then you're never going to do a deal with them again. That's bad business. That's idiocy. There's a reason I was able to get pretty much whatever I wanted. And it's because tons of people were like, oh, hey, man, thanks for looking out for me. Thanks for hooking me up. And so people who are beginners automatically were shielded from anything. It's like, I'm not going to even try and trade any of your cards off you until you know what you want. Because I don't want you to feel like, oh, I like you and what you did for me, so I'm going to trade you this valuable card even in a fair trade because they might feel bad afterwards. And the other category was children slash mentally handicapped people, which had an auto, well, every trade automatically favors you and half the time you just get the shit for free and I will be extra vigilant of people ripping you off. Like, I remember once there was this guy who thought because I was like a good negotiator... And I fucking bargained well that that meant that I was some kind of scam artist. And so he told me about how he ripped off this mentally disabled girl. And he's telling it to me in this room. Like, it's his place, basically. It's like a pseudo game store almost. And he's telling me, like, yo, I ripped off, like, this mentally disabled girl. And he's saying it to me like I'm going to be proud of him. And so at the top of my lungs... I was like, bro, you ripped off the mentally disabled girl? Like, to, so that everybody in there heard it. It's like, like, it's repugnant what you did. But what's even worse is that you think I'm like that. Like, bro, don't you understand that you can thrive and like reputation matters and you can thrive and do well. There's a reason people have come to me year after year after year for their cards, for their trading and purchasing cards from me needs, son. And it's because... I'm not going to fuck you, right? Like, that's stupid. It's really bad. Quite the opposite. I would sit there and pay attention. I'd hear somebody over here having a conversation going, hey man, do you, you don't have like, um, you don't have any Urnum Jins, do you? And they'd be like, nah man, sorry, right? And then I'd just be somewhere and I'd be like, oh, this guy's got Urnums, I'll trade him off him. And then I would come up to the guy who's looking for Urnums and be like, look man, I know you didn't say this to me, but I heard you were looking for Earnham. So I picked these up in case you want them. But understand, if you don't, that's cool. Because you didn't ask me for them. And you don't have to take them. And in every case, they were like, wait, what? That's so cool of you. Yeah, no, I will happily trade those off you. And then they usually insist on giving you more than they're worth. Because they appreciate the consideration. It's super easy to, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. If you apply the proper principles, it's, it is not difficult to become the center of a hub that supplies a bunch of people with cards. But if you act shadily, you're not going to get anywhere. If you burn the spokes, you ain't, you, ain't got a, you ain't got nothing connected to the hub. You know what I mean? So yeah, I remember, uh, I have so many, watching so many people like, Watch, watch, yo, you just got that from the vault from the store and they sell it super cheap just because the guy who runs the store is really nice. So just so you know, the cards in that secret layer bot are worth a ton. And the guy who's like trading with him is shooting me a look and it's like, if you think that there's any unspoken rule where I'm just going to watch you fucking rob somebody who's new. Oh, oh, are you angry at me because I didn't let you fucking make money off of robbing somebody? No, it's not okay. It doesn't happen nearly as much now because people can just check stuff on their phones and it's, it's not the same way. But there are people who would totally shark kids. I remember ripoff artists. There's a dude who basically... I fucking hated this guy. He'd travel around with a whole suitcase and he had to write down every card on both sides of the trade because he'd go home and just tug off about how well he did in the deal. And I remember I had a bunch of hard to get foils that he wanted. 
And so he had to do a fair trade with me. And I'm super chill. I'm like, oh, well, this is a good deal, man. Everybody's getting what they want. I'm happy. You're happy. He goes, I'm not happy. I said, I don't fucking care if you're happy, bro. Do you want to do the trade or not? He's like, yeah. And it's like, what a petulant little bitch. You know it's of worth to have these foils, but because you can't fuck me over, you're unhappy. Die mad, bitch. You know what I mean? Keep this unhappiness deep in you. I'm glad that at other events, because this guy would be at a number of different events. And guess what? Since I was the hub, I had lots of fucking shit all the time. You want crazy stuff? I probably got it kicking around. That's how it went. So people go, oh, my buddy would love this card. And I, they'd be like, who is it? And they point at the guy and I'd be like, oh, you should go tell him. You should go tell him. Go tell him. And they go, yo, buddy, somebody has that card. And you could see him turn around with a smile on his face. And I'd be like, and he just turns around. It's like, that's right, fuck stick. Fair deals only. What are you going to do? People try all kinds of skeezy bullshit. Motherfucker will pull out a $20 foil. You pull out four or $5 cards or whatever. And then he goes, oh, no, I only do one for one. Oh, okay. I, we're not trading then. What? What are you, fucking brain damaged, bro? Like, does this legitimately work on anybody? You think this is fucking clever? You're trying to rip me off, clown face. Do you want to fucking do this fair deal or not? Like, I was a very nice guy. Until it was obvious you're trying to rip me off, then it's fuck you and your mother. I know how badly you want this desirable card. Are you going to give me what it's worth? Or are you going to go fuck yourself in the woods? Because either way, whatevs, bro. Make your fucking choice. I'm not easy meat, bitch. I know what my stuff is worth and you can suck my bag. The different games that people would play. I had guru lands and this guy's like, I want the guru lands. And I'm like, oh, no problem. What are they worth? Oh, they're your cards. I can't tell you what they're worth. No problem. Looks like I can't trade them to you then. It's like, what? Oh, well, I mean, I have no idea what they're worth or whatever. And you literally can't tell me what they're worth, right? Because they're my card. So I guess we can't trade, huh? And then, oh, they're, they're worth this. Oh, yeah, that's right. They are. It's crazy how you fucking knew that. Like, fuck you, scumbag. You think you're fucking smarter than me? So have fun all day wanting these cards while I keep telling you I will trade with you and then I'm going to go and eat my lunch and then I'm going to go to the bathroom and go and have a smoke and I'm going to make you wait all fucking day and then I'm going to make you give me a premium on top of the value because fuck you. But I would have traded these to you easy peasy if you didn't treat me like a bitch, right? So... The fuck, I don't get it. They think they're slick, but they're not. This only works on fucking dummies, son. And it's not It's not a good return. It's not a good return on people wanting to deal with you again. You think you're slick, but you're not. You're not. You don't know how to fucking connect with people. And trying to prey on them is fucking pathetic over a card game. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So yeah, man. That kind of stuff tweaks me. People trying to rip off fucking noobs and shit tweaks my bag. Zero, you live for that pettiness? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck that at that point. It's like, whatevs, man. I hate your stupid little games. But it's like, I'll play the game with you then. I won't be like, bro, I know you know. Why are you doing this? Right? I actually did that. I did that another time when he did it again. I'm like, are we going to do this again, bro? After the guru lands? Are you for real going to pretend like you don't know the value of shit like you did the first fucking time? For real. Like, you remember me but don't remember the trade? Fuck off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I used to spend significant amounts of time trading cards and all of this kind of stuff, man. People think they're fucking slick. And it's just like, man. And then there's other there's other things where people aren't slick at all, but they're just like, they're, to facilitate the trade, you just have to understand who you're dealing with. Remember how I said there's people who are like, and I heard a guy at a big tournament talk about how he collects tokens. I had no tokens with me. Made a note that next time I come into the city to bring a big box of tokens. So it came with a huge box of tokens. Found the guy, because I got good memory for people. I was like, bro, you're the dude who collects tokens, right? And he's like, yup. And I went, bam! And I slapped like 200 some odd tokens down on the table or whatever it was. It was a big fat stack, right? Uh. And he's like, I went through his stuff and I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'll do this stack for this foil chameleon colossus. And he's like, no way, man. No way. I'm not going to do that. Like, there's no way that's a good deal. And I'm like, okay, well, let me ask you a question, bro. What do you value these tokens at, right? Like, what, a quarter piece in trade? Does that sound fair? And he's like, yeah, but I'm not going to count all that. And I'm like, don't worry. I already fucking counted it. Here's how many are here. Here's what it's worth. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, okay, foil chameleon colossus plus this. Because 
if we had just done it for the Chameleon Colossus, that was worth less than the stack of tokens. But by all through the process, and he agreed to it afterwards. He wouldn't do it for the Chameleon Colossus at first, but after explaining, here's the agreed value, correct? Here's how many they are. Okay, this is the agreed value, correct? Okay, cool. Colossus plus. Okay, cool. You know? So... Ryan, you don't really play Magic anymore if you've moved to Flesh and Blood, but you still like my channel? Well, thanks, man. Thanks for stopping by to say you wish me the best. I appreciate the kind words. BS, 30 years ago, you traded 60 Plague Rats for 60 Four Horsemen Alpha Beta cards, Moxes included. <laughs> what are you going to do, bro? I traded a Time Walk for a box of Wyvern cards. <laughs> I remember getting some amazing trades back in the day. I got my Black Lotus for two Rock Hydras and two Rock Occur Ridges. I got a Mox Pearl for two Magical Hacks and two uh, Blue Elemental Blasts, right? Things were way different back then and there weren't like set prices on everything. So it was just like, all right, let's just muddle it out and what feels fair and all this kind of stuff. So this guy collects red cards and he's like, yo... I'll get, I, I want those rock of rock hydras and rock of ridges and it's like all right well i want that lotus kind of thing like we're all happy with the deal but if you look at it by today's standards you're like this is insane but it was like you got to understand when we started magic these weren't financial commodities like this was like any other game that you would throw on the shelf and would be worthless later the idea of thinking that magic cards were going to be worth money or like something that would be sustainable and you would keep would be like the idea of thinking that the properties from monopoly like it's not exactly the same because obviously they come randomized boosters but really the mentality wasn't this is like it's an awesome game but not that it's going to be around forever and these cards will have all this value and shit that took a while to get baked into the underneath and now magic's just this gigantic fucking commodities market of insanity I remember uh, when we first started and my friends had under, uh, what was it like? Um, I played I played a big green deck with a little bit of black. And so I had bayous in there. I had like seven bayous, eight bayous, something like that. And we just figured, okay, this thing is a forest and a swamp. So I'll give you a forest and a swamp for it. There weren't rare indicators or anything. We had no idea. So it was like whatever. And then when we realized, like, because we traded all the dual lands that way. I got bayous that way, but... My plateaus went for a mountain and a plains. It wasn't like any of us knew and hoarded up dual lands, right? But once we all found out, we just treated them like what they were and went, oh, these are hard to get. So we're not going to trade them for basic lands anymore. If you want dual lands, you got to trade me something better I can use. Like if you want a dual land, then I don't know, maybe I'll give you two dual lands for your royal assassin kind of thing. Because dual lands were good, but I mean, you could just get them out of packs, right? So they weren't like... These ultra mystified things they've become where now when you see them, you're like, oh my God, there's so much money and all the craziness, right? Like, that's nutty. Like, this wasn't nearly as big a deal back in the day. Cards like, that, I mean, it's obviously not a real one, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Anyways, I gotta go and take a leak, and I haven't made a new fucking intermission yet, so here you go. Don't be a dink! Use my Amazon link! When Hatchet goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link! Don't be a bitch! You gotta scratch that itch! Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatchet goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some.
some work. Don't be a dink! Use my Amazon link! When Hatchet goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link! Don't be a bitch! Alright, I'm back. So yeah, I will mention again, since other people have asked me, you can use that link for anything you're getting on Amazon. Bookmark that shit, son. Bookmark it. All right. All right. I have something that you smash. Something that you smash, and then it explodes out. Like, this is, this is a little package. You smack it, and it's supposed to burst out as a balloon, right? Brand says, true shield bearers, bookmark that link is what you're gathering. That's right, buddy. That's right. Speaking of gathering, the Steam Deck lets you play Magic the Gathering, if you didn't know that already, buddy. Thompson, what's up, man? It's going good. We're about to do some smacking it. Let's, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Okay. Oh, I popped it. What happened? It popped. That's not what's supposed to happen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I don't know if it'll pop out now because I accidentally fucked the bag up. <laughs> Come on. You guys can hear it, right? It's crinkle cracking. Yo, Brent, try it, bro. It works surprisingly well on the Steam Deck straight out the gates. Like, if you know the cards you're playing with and against pretty well, you'll be totally fine. And looking at the cards otherwise is not that challenging. So, come on, man. All right, hold on. Ah! That got me. That got me. Can you hear it? Gianna, join the channel membership. Well, I guess we got plenty of time while this inflates. I'll switch it back for a second. Bear your shield with pride, Gianna! No, 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 no super duper. It is not. This is not the egg blowing I was talking about. The egg blowing I was talking about is actually blowing the contents out of an egg through a tiny hole in it. And guess what? Doing four eggs really hurt my jaw, man. I messed my jaw blowing eggs. <laughs> Come on. There you go. I got, I got two of these. I got two of these. So let's see if this one does better. There we go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. 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 Go! 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 
Hey, Kensuke, you were the one who said still better than the towel. When did you get in here? When did you get in here? I can hear you. Come on, man. Come on. This is for the internet. This is this is the big show. This is all I got, guys. This is like my life. Oh. It's coming. It's coming. I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear it. No. It popped open. Can you hear it? Come on, blow up, man! Blow up, damn you! I can hear it! Oh, whoa! <laughs> there you go. That's it. There you go. This one did its job. We did it. We did it. Is it candy? No, this is it. That's the whole thing, bro. You, that's the. It, that's it. Like when you're with a lady, and then you pop, and then you're just done. That's this is as good as it gets. It's just a puff bag balloon. Get excited. It's probably leaking chemicals into the air in my house. This is the end for me. I hope it was worth it. Squeeze them like two fat nuts. Watch my fingers get blown off in real time. Kablowy! Job seeker! With the, just the authoritative super chat of goodness with no words. Nothing to say. Just an authoritative maneuver. Thanks, buddy! So yeah, it's just whatever, causing some kind of chemical reaction. Jess, motherfucker, you? You wonder if it's just baking soda and vinegar in there? How the fuck are you not assuming that these are miracle stones that came down from the heavens? You ridiculous fuck. Mr. Believes in fucking chi powers, bro. Chi doesn't exist. Chi powers don't exist. If people had fucking magical powers, bro, if people had magical powers, they would either be locked up in a government bunker if there was only one person, or they would all be training like fucking airbenders and earthbenders and shit. You ever watch the earthbenders in the last airbender movie when they all go, wah, and fling their stones? There'd be fucking academies for this shit, bro. And that fucking clip that you sent me of that guy in China, I got news for you. If there's a fucking chi master who can control shit with his mind, communist China's not gonna let him wander around on the fucking news, bro. The fucking bowl of water, the bowl of water had a fucking magnet in it. So when he went like this with his hands in the video, and the bowl moved, it's because somebody's under the table with a magnet moving the bowl, bro. Moving the bowl. And that dingus that you think who can light shit on fire with his head, he has chemicals fucking on his head. And there's chemicals on the little swab. And when he touches them, they light up. So how the fuck can you figure out that this is a chemical reaction, but not figure out that a Magoo tapping his head with a rod is a chemical reaction? How the fuck do you have the wherewithal for one? and not the other. How is that possible? How is that possible? Nobody has magic fucking powers. Nobody can fucking chi blast out of their body and knock bricks off a table 10 feet away, you motherfucker. Those videos you sent me were so stupid. Like Carly heard me yelling for like 10 minutes, for like 10 fucking minutes, bro. Like, you know, I was typing in all caps to you, bro. I literally couldn't yell enough in the typing. I can't type fast enough to yell all the shit I want to yell you. None of that is real. And then you fucking come here and you prove that you understand that there can be chemical reactions like this, but I can't take it. I can't fucking take it. How the fuck can you believe what? That guy doesn't have cheap powers. That's not a thing. That's not a fucking thing. And no, dudes can't fucking electrocute each other with their own electromagnetic fields. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. 
You wouldn't just see it. You just wouldn't randomly see it in some grainy YouTube video, bro. This would be much bigger. It would be much bigger. And how are all the comments on the videos not a dead giveaway? They're all left by brain dead morons going, this guy's cheese off the chart. There's no chart for chi because it's not a fucking thing. You can go, oh, it's some part of some spirituality. Open up your sh seven chakras. These are the locuses of energy in your body. Yeah, sure, I know. And you can imagine a ball of light healing yourself and all that crap. But let's be very real. You don't have fucking healing powers. You're not generating balls. Balls of light that heal people. You're just taking advantage of the fucking placebo effect. You could literally eat dirt if a doctor told you it would fucking heal you. You might be able to pull it off with your body just healing based on your own fucking alignment with that belief. That's a scientific thing though. It's got nothing to do with magic. There's no such thing as chi. There is no such thing as chi. How the fuck can you be like, well, this is probably inflating based on a chemical reaction. But shit, but come on, man. I need internal consistency from you. I, 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 I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to get it. Magnets, how do they work? Oh, you put one in a bowl, right? And you fill the bowl with water. And then you make sure that you film the bowl at an angle where you can't see the fucking magnet attached to it. And then you have some fucking magoo under the table move the bowl. So when he hits it with the chi, it doesn't even slide evenly like it would with the force. It has this jerky start-stop slide that you can see that's clearly from two fucking magnets on either side. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. Move it along. It's the most base level charlatan shit. And then there's this other one where this guy's just, he's a fire starter. He holds his hand over the fire, over the paper, and then the fire starts. Oh look, something fell off his hand into the paper. I wonder if that's what started the fire. Nope, it's his fucking chi powers. It must be his chi powers. There's no such thing. There's no such fucking thing as chi. Just like the fucking stupid Wiccans don't have magic powers. I wish I was dumb. I wish I was stupid and I could be like, magic's real. Magic's real and I can use it. I can use it. Even though I'm still just gonna go and work my same shitty job and live a terrible life, I have special powers. How much time do I have to spend huffing on a tailpipe before my fucking IQ drops low enough for me to believe this honky bullshit? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. So I can move stuff with his mind. I can move stuff with my mind too. See this? That was my mind deciding to move it. My mind decided to ring a bell. I do everything with my mind. That's how it fucking works. I grab my dick with it. But guess what? That's not fucking chi powers. That's just the normal operation of your body, man. People don't even get it. I would love to live in a world where magic was real and chi and shit was real. But guess what? If it was real, we would have demonstrable science based on it. So yeah, chi is nonsense. <laughs> Splendor, five element theory has been around a long time. I'm disrespecting acupuncture. Nice try. Nice try to turn it from me talking about people claiming they have chi blasting powers to go, hey, acupuncture uses a term like that. Okay, great. And you're disrespecting medical technology. No, I'm ranting about people pretending there are fucking magic powers, but do continue to tell me that I'm fucking wrong here. Cheese is a fucking thing. Cheese is real. Cheese is real. I eat it on my fucking sandwiches. There's cheddar cheese and Swiss cheese. Checkmate. You say chi doesn't exist, but if chi doesn't exist, how do you spell cheese, motherfucker? Checkmate, bitch. Come on, man. Come the fuck on. Wiccans do have power of commerce. Oh, you're not wrong, bro. I went to magical dumbass night in the city where they have this fucking get together of posers and idiots. And it's just like, I'm a druid. You're a fat guy in a fucking moo moo who took like a fucking coat hanger and wrapped a shitty rock on the end of a stick, bro. This bitch over here on the, you can read the bones. You can see the future, but you couldn't make a better future for yourself where your fat, ugly ass didn't have to sit on the ground and fucking read people's bones for eight bucks. Like you can't see the future, dumbass, or you'd be doing something else, anything else. Like for real, for real. What is this? What is this? Hey, I thought it'd be really cool if I had a bunch of bird skulls around my house. Instead of character, I can be a caricature, right? 
Tony, your wife says that my intermission song needs to take the keep the root note and take the second and third note up a half step to make it into a devil's tritone. Listen, root means fucking in Australia, bro. So I think your wife is saying something about trying to get like a three-way going on, and that's what the devil's tritone is. But just tell her, I'm a happily married man, so I get it. You see me fucking playing those rocking tunes, and you're like, oh, yes, let's have an unholy baby with this man. But the answer is no. The answer is no. The tune will stay exactly as it is. All right? I have to keep things at a certain level. I have to keep things at a certain level, bro. Uh, Daniel, I never saw a Cadbury commercial like that that I can recall. So if it existed, it didn't make any impact on me, bro. One with a lion pretending to be a bunny. I don't remember that. <laughs> Tony, yeah. Tony says, this is the wife. Yes, it's three way. Tony doesn't have a wife. I just figured it out. I get it now, Tony. I get it. The show up and your wife is just you standing with a mirror beside you and a fucking wig on. And it's just like, you're, I can see that. No, oh, come here and kiss us, handsome. I'm not falling for that again. I'm not falling for that ever. I mean. I know, Tony. I know you're a fucking 13-year-old boy. I know the signs of a 13-year-old on the internet. You can't fool me. Don't worry, buddy. Once you've been with a lady, you won't have time for these shenanigans because you'll find out that fucking marriage of any type just drains your will to live. Like, you got no more times for jokes or fucking happiness. Look at me. I'm an angry old fucking husk. Does anything make me happy? Clearly not. All I do is rant and rave. I yelled at fucking Jess for believing in chi. I yelled at people for giving me money. I'm just a miserable bastard. You're better off just staying 13 forever. You know how you do that? Go get in the fucking bathtub. Lay face down and turn the water on. <laughs> Jess, there's some magic tricks you've seen that are good. You admit magic might be a real thing. It can't. Magic can't be a real thing. Right? Because magic is... Oh, there's no explanation for it. If magic ever worked, it would be science and we would use it. You know what's magic? Electricity. You know what's magic? The fucking internet, bro. I can pull my fucking dick out right now in real time if I want to. And everybody will see that. And it will be on the internet forever. That's magic. That's, techno that's technology, right? So, yeah. Like, anything that would actually be qualified as magic is literally just technology. Tony, look, I'm not stupid. I'm 34. Yeah, rule 34, right? See, you're not fooling me. You're not fooling me. I've been married for 14. You're 14. That's what it is. That's why. I'm not 13. I'm 14. Can't fool me. Hey, what up, Alan? It has been a while. How you doing? How you doing? What up, Wes? How's it going, bro? Oh, Kensuke's here. Kensuke's here. Yes. Fucking awesome. Guess what, guys? Guess what? Things are about to get real dark. Unexpected darkness. Have we talked about the infinite energy machines the aliens left when they crash you? Just no. No. While I... <laughs> No. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, beef quake. What? You did what? What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Whatever. I'm getting distracted. I'm getting distracted. Have I searched this pack? Nope. Now, why would I want to ruin the fun ahead of time? All right, I'm going to slowly try and open this because I want to keep the wrapper real nice because this is probably the last pack of dark I'll ever open in my entire life. And I think this is the first time I've opened a pack of dark since the dark was in print. Oh, 
Okay, slowly and gently work the fingers inside, just like your mama likes it. Oh, the cards are facing me, okay. Well, I think the uncommons are gonna, oh, dude, damn it. Oh, oh, so close and yet so far. So, the front of it, I have to admit, looks absolutely gorgeous. Did a great job that way, but messed it up here and a little bit up here too. But from this side, beauty, absolutely beauty. And considering that's the front side, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, so we're going to do it this way. I've already seen the card at the bottom. All right. Whoop. So we got morale first. Two white and one. All attacking creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And that's at instant speed. <laughs> Compared to the stuff you get now, not that powerful, right? After Lash's speech, the knights grew determined to crush their ancient enemies clan by clan. Tivadar of Thorn, History of the Goblin Wars. This card sucks. This card sucks, bro. This was never, this was never like the hotness at any point. Especially since they had already made Army of Allah in Arabian Nights. So, like, plus two, plus zero was usually better than plus one, plus one. So this was not, this was not exciting. Oh, Inquisition. One black and two. Look at target player's hand. Inquisition does one damage to target player for each white card in his or her hand. I've only ever used this in the cube, right? It's uh, not cube, but uh, in the Chandler game. In the Chandler. This was never in cube. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, scavenger folk. I loved these guys, bro. One green to put out. One, one. One green and tap, sacrifice scavenger folk to destroy target artifact. These guys actually are working in service of Yogmoth in the Thran novel. They run up and strip things down and like half of them get mowed down while it's happening. String, weapons, wax, or jewels. It makes no difference. Leave nothing unguarded in Scarwood. And look at the look on Buddy's face. I love it. Just that insane stare with the ring, man. That's so cool. Fisher, a spell that just straight up destroys a creature with no restrictions. I was really impressed by that, right? Like, Swords of Plowshares existed, and we didn't like that it gave your opponent life gain, right? We didn't enjoy that. Terror couldn't get black creatures or artifact creatures, but Fisher could get anything. And it had the, the insane flavor text from Plato. Must not all things at the last be swallowed up in death? That's pretty deep, man. Cauldron says, Lord aboard, incoming, and member Lord too. All right, Cauldron. You got it. You are both. You are both Lord of the board and also the member Lord. Hold on. Let me write that super chat. This marker's hosed, man. Somebody sent me a big fat box of dry erase markers that really lasted a long time. And now I'm like out of them and it sucks because these workers are getting rough, boy. They're getting rough. All right, Cauldron. Oh, yeah, yeah, put the dash one. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's trippy. You did it in reverse. You have to have a membership to be able to do that, but somehow it registered you gifting a membership before you had the membership. I've never seen that before in my life. And you know what? You get a shield welcome. Thanks for joining the channel membership. Bear your shield with pride. It's funny, on the live stream archive, you can get memberships as well. Only two people have them. So only two people have seen the secret man, <laughs> the secret hidden man. Bull Falcon and Andrew H. are literally the only two members on the Archive channel. So they have illustrious first, first in status. All right, back to the pack. 
Yeah, I really liked Fisher. I found this to be a cool card. My wife added you on Twitter and insisted on sending me a video to prove the story. I'm going to get her banned. I'm going to get her banned off of Twitter. I'm going to contact Twitter support and be like, I am being harassed by this woman who's trying to pork me and her husband at the same time. And I feel very uncomfortable and unsafe, Twitter. Get her. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if that's actually what happened? They'd be like, what the hell? The trust and safety team locked my account and said I was cyber stalking. <laughs> all right all right where were we oh well here we go this guy is complete garbage one white and one one two squire this card everybody hated nobody liked this card sometimes you'd use it just because you needed another body i'm pretty sure i had him in a deck at one point that's how bad things are back in the day you just didn't have that many choices but he's awful right he looks like he's wearing an old hockey helmet, too. He looks like he's got an old hockey helmet. Ridiculous. He looks, like, just so goofy, man. So goofy. All right, here we go. Carnivorous plant. Bro, I loved this thing, man. One green and three, four, five. It's a wall, so it can't attack. It's got defender by, like, today's, by today's standards, but... Bro, Quentin Hoover artwork, it's awesome. It's a gigantic, like, this sounds like the kind of thing you would summon up. A gigantic plant that'll eat people who are trying to get you, man. It's got awesome flavor. I totally had this in my green tower deck. Because how are you going to get around it, son? I don't need no wall of ice zero seven. Give me a four or five, man. Mmm. Awesome. Awesome. All right, uh, I'm going to do them in reverse order because I actually saw this one myself. Scarecrow! I have always thought that this artwork is super fucking unnerving, bro. Like, for real, this artwork has always fucking creeped me out. Five mana, two, two. Six mana, tap. Until end of turn, all damage done to you by flying creatures is reduced to zero. The flavor text says, There was more malice in its button eyes than should have been possible in something that had never known life. Epic flavor text. The artwork is like for real. This artwork is horrifying, man. Just the stitches that look like teeth, the way it's all sewn together like a crazy dirty sack man. This thing is super intense. I love it. I love it. Dripping with flavor. Just dripping. Okay. And the final card. Can't be a Maze of Ith, by the way, guys, because Maze of Ith was actually a common. Final card is... Hey, Skull of Orm! I loved this back in the day. Use it to get your control magics and stuff back from the graveyard. Three casting cost, five and tap it. Bring an enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Though lifeless, the Skull still possessed a strange power over the flow of magic. Like, this is just epic. Some random guy's skull with one glowing eye. This crazy helmet that kind of only covers... Like, it's designed to only come down and cover one eye, but that's the glowing magical one. There's just... And the jaw guard on the one side. It's just so unique. It's so unique feeling. Like, bro, the dark is just so flavorful. And these cards are absolutely pristine. They're so nice. Where is... Where is the box where I put these packs when I'm done with it? Because this one is going to get stored away right away. I like to keep them in, in the shape I got them in so that when I feel nostalgic, I can pull them out and look at them. Oh, it's over here. I keep my old school boosters in this. I keep them in this guy the old school the old school mirage era long box oh are the team bags not in here where are the team bags this is no good ah they're supposed to be in this box luckily have them right here all right. Yeah, 
Yeah, dude, this is super nostalgic. This is awesome. I like to keep the cards, if they're not going to go into the cube or anything like that, I like to keep them straight up in the booster packs so that I can enjoy the entire, the entire thing. It's like one, oh, this pack is in such great shape. Oh, so awesome. It's going to look so good in here. Yeah, there we go. It's ready. Bam. I love it, man. I love having these old nostalgic packs. So cool. All right. Well, let's close this back up. Pierce, you thought you were the only one who kept old school boosters and starter decks with the cards you'd go through them for nostalgia? Nah, you ain't alone, bro. You ain't alone. Uh, James, do I know of a good source to get old school packs in Canada? No, I didn't get these myself. I was sent these. I am. I have that. I have the good fortune to have people who really enjoy what I do, who are kind enough to send me these things. So, I uh, I'm not currently sourcing my own old school packs and. I don't know. I don't know where would I think. I mean, I would just check like the biggest, the biggest retailers, right? Places like uh, probably like four hundred one or face to face. Juggling, you got a pack of oh Italian dark. Was it the same like as the Italian legends, where it didn't look like the old school card and it had more of um, vibrant? Oh yeah, no wait, never mind. I've seen cards from that. They do. They're vibrant, more like fourth edition. Oh, man. Yeah, I love me some magic cards, bro. Magic's dope. Going through old school packs and stuff is awesome. I still have a few more. I still have a few more nostalgia blasts for us uh, in terms of Odyssey. Urza's Legacy and Stronghold. This is going to be the last one. It's going to go like this. It's going to be Odyssey, Legacy, and then Stronghold. Wes, you run that Skull and a Man Barbs deck? That works. Get your Man Barbs back, right? <laughs> Beefquake, you like the smell of the old school cards? Fair enough. Fair enough, buddy. It's not, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't really, um, okay, hold on. Let me just, I forgot to get rid of that while I was at it. Bam. There we go. Got to clean that extra crap out of the Discord that I put in there. But there is his legacy. You get a chance for one of the original first foil cards. That's true. That's true. I mean, I do have one more booster. I have an antiquities booster that is like a, a graded antiquities booster. So that one's not getting opened. It's just sitting in. It's it's sitting in its little plastic prison <laughs> zero yep eighth edition where they started foil they knew people like black borders so they made the foils with black borders and they all started doing cool stuff around like what 10th edition where they said we're going to take reminder text off the foils so like time stop and it's like the the non-foil version of time stop said end the term and then had a huge bracket that explained everything that that meant but the foil one just said end the turn right in the middle of that text box. And there was just something about the way it looked. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Pierce, you cracked two boxes of Legacy. Nice. Hard to identify the rare and uncommon in Stronghold. 
Oh, yeah, because of the non-rare stuff? Well, the good news is I tend to actually have a pretty good gauge on what's rare and what's not because I came up in the time where there weren't rarity symbols and stuff. And we've done a bunch of streams called Stump Hatcher where people try and name all these different cards from whatever set it is. We're doing Legends today or whatever it is. And I, I, there's never a card that I know nothing about. And I'm almost always, mostly, if not completely, right about the cards. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I just, I, I have a ton of magic knowledge stored up here, including the rarity level on a bunch of the older cards. Although there are some that I can get wrong, some that I thought were uncommon that could turn out to be rare or vice versa kind of deal. That's right, Moogle, back in the day, no rarities, no rarity symbols. It was just the expansion symbol. So, I mean, it's not like now where there's 25,000 different magic cards, so good luck remembering them all, right? I don't know how many sets there were, but I've always been a fanatic about magic anyhow. So, for me, learning it all, going, right, I love all this nostalgic stuff. I'm looking forward to going back and covering the, the like, Thran War and getting back into the old lore and really just, like, diving deep down i've been playing a brother's war style soldier deck i think that's part of the appeal too that's kept me going with it is uh on arena that that white blue soldier deck oh but i've been having a lot of fun playing a ton building up my resources i'm gonna go ham ham on bloomboro but i am gonna do some thunder junction action i'm gonna get the mastery pass and accumulate that up because it's gonna be a 110 level season right so there's a ton of resources to get out of that, and it's totally going to be worth the gems, considering I already have 15,000 gems, man. Pierce, there's not 76,000 different magic cards. You must be including all the different variants of stuff, right? There's no way. There's no way there's that many individual unique magic cards yet. Wizards has been churning out a lot, but they haven't quite hit that insanity. Jess, you enjoyed being yelled at? Well, it makes sense. It was fun. It was fun. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go to the Thunder Junction pre-release. I'm going to mess around with it on Arena, but I'm not going to be too bummed if I don't get very much Thunder Junction. I'll be way more bummed if I don't get to get in on Bloomboro because I feel like Bloomboro is going to be the big hit set of the year, not including Modern Horizons 3, which I'm sure will be a financial success, but I'm talking about from a regular, normal release perspective, new magical world, new stuff to explore, all of it. Bloomboro is where my hope and my hype is. Daniel, Dakmore Sources is what you got you into magic. You got so impressed by the art that you knew magic was something special. Change that to personal incarnation. That's what happened to me, bro. Same kind of deal. That card made me go, yo, this is sweet, man. This is sweet. Well, I cosplay as Oko for Thunder Junction live stream. Nope. Nope. But I am going to have an ab body pillow soon enough. So I've decided what the, what the body pillow is going to look like. So I just have to get the image together and get it over to the, the body pillow company so I can get my ab body pillow. <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> oh man i'm stoked about that proxy cube idea that's fucking dope that's dope uh google 9788 functionally unique cards see that sounds about right to me 2025k sounds way more like way more logical to me way more logical Is the plane called Bloomboro? Yep. Yep. It's an animal-based plane where anybody who comes onto the plane is transformed into the animal that most suits their personality. So that's what happens to any planeswalkers who show up there. You're turned into a humanoid animal, which is fucking cool, right? That's fucking cool. I like, I like planes that force their rules on you, like Segovia, where if you go to Segovia, you actually shrink down to a minuscule version of yourself because Segovia is a minuscule plane, so you're automatically shrink down to it and if you summon something from segovia it is the smaller version like the segovian leviathan
He thought Jace died. No, they didn't say that he died. They just said Elspeth stabbed him and that he was completely phyrexianized. Should he have been irrevocably changed? Absolutely. Should he have been able to run around his Ashiok? Doesn't even make sense why they did that. They just had some artwork from, Sir, from some other plan or whatever. It's a real baffling choice to me. So, whatever. Vraska was the one I thought was supposed to have been made. Like, I thought Vraska did a heroic sacrifice to save Chase. But now, she's completely dephyrexianized. And we're supposed to be excited that she and Jace have a space baby. But I just don't care. I just don't care. What happened to Ashiok? Pff, who knows? Nothing happened to Ashiok. Ashiok just is like, people are so desperate to make it make sense. They're like, maybe when like Will hit Ashiok with the ice, she left. And then Jace showed up as Ashiok in that moment to take Ariette away. And it's like, Jace didn't need Ariette for this plan. Anything Ariette could do, Jace could do with his mind magic. He has the illusion magic to fool all you guys. Ariette wasn't needed. He could pull any information he needed from anybody's mind, subvert anybody's minds. It's not logical. What actually happened was wizards fucked the story of Throne of Eldraine all over the place trying to jam Kellen into it as like a main guy when originally that wasn't the plan and it was totally not going to be that story. So they were just like, uh, we got to like change us around so he's the main guy and that means we're going to make these changes. And so at the end of this, like what was supposed to happen is Ashiok is sending all these waves of nightmares that are actually terrorizing Eldraine. They're attacking people, and there's this chick called Neva who is key to stopping all of this, and Ashiok is, she's trapped in eternal slumber, so there's no escaping from any of Ashiok's nightmares there. Their powers are more limited in the actual world, but they're there, and Will's forces are fighting them. But they threw all of that off to the side and took Ariat from... Somebody was lower on the totem pole, moved her up the hierarchy, and then went, oh no, she's like the big bad witch. And then we go, oh, Ashiok's going to spirit her away because we got big plans for her. And and Ashiok's like, yo, we're going to make, I'm going to make you a queen somewhere else. That was a completely different storyline that they've just chosen not to follow up on. The same way that Malcolm got fungus in his eyes from the Myco Tyrant at the end of the last story, but they threw that away because... They don't care. They want to go, wow, there's all this cool stuff you should be excited about, but we don't actually intend to talk about it at all. And just go, okay, there's not going to be any payoff, so who cares, right? So, yeah, it's 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 unfortunate when you're somebody who... Uh, who really enjoys lore and story when they toss it to the wayside, but... At the end of the day, at least things got so bad that I'm not worrying about it anymore. I just went, eh, I'm going to start talking about, I'm doing the Thran novel. I'm going back to old school lore. It'll get less views, but I don't care. If I can't stand the lore, why do I even want to tell the story? And then I got to listen to people's whining about different aspects of it. And I'm just ugh, trying to trying to be happy about it and make a story that's enjoyable when you don't find it enjoyable. It's... There's nothing left, man. Markov Manor at least had some kind of coherence to it a bit, but it was still underwhelming and kind of crap overall. But Thunder Junction's just nothing. It's just nothing. It's just stable together nonsense. So, whatever. I'm going back to the old school lore. I'll have a chuckle at the new school stuff. If Bloomboro turns out to be a cool story that doesn't feel stupid, then maybe I'll cover it. But old school lore. For the time being. That's the way it's going to go. Alright, Millmaster, have a good one, buddy! So yeah, Bloomborough, like I said, that's the big hope I'm hanging on for. Anyways, thanks for coming and hanging out, my friends. I will get together again with you guys soon. But for now, I descend into the waters of Unlife.